In the name of Jesus. Amen. My friends, in most parts of life, we like to get people on a path, if you will, a line towards an end goal, an end goal of success. For example, every September, parents wonder, they do indeed wonder, if their potty training, their ABCs, and discipline will be enough to get their little children off to kindergarten, off on that path. And every May, every May we get together, we celebrate the graduation of high school seniors, and then parents send them off to college on that path to that end goal of graduation. Businesses, they do the same. They have orientation, they have training classes, and then once they have those orientation and training classes, they direct workers into the business site to accomplish the task at hand. You get the picture. There's a line, there's a direction, there's a course, there's a goal. Indeed, we live in a very linear world. I guess a very linear world. We start with training wheels. Yes, training wheels. The wheels come off, and then we're pushed into that open parking lot to pedal, oh my goodness, to pedal with all of our hearts content, to pedal and ride to the moon. This linear way of thinking makes sense, though, does it not? You see, each and every one of us in this sanctuary, we are influenced by the industrial age of America. Think about it for a moment. Raw materials through this industrial age that we have kind of come out of, raw materials, they are brought to a factory, if you will. They are hammered, they're heated, they're molded, they're shaped. And then along the manufacturer line, these products go, these raw materials go. And then with each stop on the factory line, these raw materials, they take shape, they become something as they get screws and are molded and shaped and hammered and painted. And then at the very end of that line, that linear line, ta-da, the product is done. The product is complete. The product then is taken and it is cast out in the marketplace to do what the product does. Now, this same mindset can also be found right here in the church. You see, kids are brought to baptism. They attend VBS, so there's baptism, then there's VBS, and then there's Sunday school, and then they're confirmed. And unfortunately for many youth, it is believed that once they reach confirmation age, once they are confirmed that they have reached the end of that linear line, they have graduated from church. As a result, they will never return to the church again until they want to get married or need to have a pastor to do a family funeral. And parents of these confirmation students... Well, they feel, they feel fulfilled because they got their kid through that production line, that manufacturing line, to the so-called end. Now, I'm not quite sure why we are so wired like this as Americans. Perhaps it is maybe the Industrial Revolution. But nonetheless, we like to think linear. Aligned with the beginning, aligned with the middle, and aligned with a perceived end. And we're not content with the idea, get this, of starting over. Once we have progressed in the line, to start over and go back to the beginning, that irritates us. We like to progress on that line. And if that line is increasing upward and onward, it's even better. Upward and onward, as they say. And so to do something over again or to return back to the beginning, it's seen as a waste of time. It's seen as boring. We've already been there. We've done that. We don't like repetition. And we don't like doing something twice. We like that which is new. We like movement on the line. We like to progress. Now, I certainly do not want to be totally discarding or discrediting this linear way of thinking because it indeed has a very valuable, is yes, a very valuable, valuable spot in our society with many different situations. It is indeed very valuable. But I do believe that this linear way of thinking, this line of thinking is very problematic for the church, right here for the church. I'm not only talking about the problems of confirmation students getting confirmed and then leaving, but I'm also talking how we understand our lives as Christians. You see, in our reading from the Gospel of Luke, we hear about ten lepers. And as we heard, Jesus healed them. However, only one returned to Jesus. Let's hear that again. Only one returned to Jesus. And the other nine? 
Well, Jesus was disappointed that they did not return to him after they were healed. The point being, this Christian faith is best thought of not as a linear line, but get this, as a circle. It's a circle where we are always returning to Jesus. Now, dear friends, consider this a moment. The Samaritan leper that was healed. The Samaritan leper, he was healed. Now, one might assume that after he was healed, the Samaritan leper, as he was healed, one would assume that he perhaps would have gone off to those priests and then all would have been good and fine and dandy. He could have gone off, shown himself to the priests, and went on with his life, with health and strength, to achieve his dreams. But no, as we heard, this healed Samaritan leper, he returned to Jesus. Yes, he returned, and this returning to Jesus was good. It was very good. It was not bad. And so like that Samaritan leper, the whole Christian life can be considered as a life of constantly returning to Jesus. It is a life of continually being brought back to our baptisms, the assurance of our baptisms, making that sign of the cross upon our head and our heart, remembering that we're the redeemed. It is a life of always beginning again, It is not, though, about you and I getting a little bit of Jesus sprinkled on us and then moving on to higher and better and bigger spiritual things by our own power and our own accomplishments. Heavens, no. In the Christian faith, the movement is not from us being somehow dependent upon God and then somehow being a super spiritual star and being independent in ourselves and our own works, our own accomplishments, our own spiritual go-go juice. As you mature in the Christian faith, You do not proceed from childhood to adulthood. It's not how it works with the Christian faith. It's actually the exact opposite. It's the exact opposite of what it means to be a Christian. Again, the Christian faith is not about a linear line, but it is about a circle. You see, it might be strange to think with a circle in mind, but we actually do live in circular circumstances every single day. For example, we wake up in the morning, and I hope we brush our teeth and shower and go to work, come home and eat and get our pajamas on and go to bed. And the next day, guess what? We do it all over again. We brush our teeth, we shower, we go to work, we come home, we eat, and we get our pajamas on, and we go to sleep. And the day after that, we do it yet again. Morning, afternoon, evening, night. Morning, afternoon, evening, night. It repeats Our weeks are also circular. We repeat our weeks over and over and over. And let us not forget our seasons. We have fall and we have winter and we have summer and we have spring and we have fall and winter and summer and spring. They're circular. They repeat themselves over and over again. And the church? Yes, the church. Think of the church. We have a church calendar. We have a church calendar we follow here at St. Paul's. A very old church calendar. Thousands of years old. It begins with Advent and Christmas Advent first, then Christmas, then Epiphany, then Lent, then Easter, then Trinity, cycling through over and over and over again. And to be a little more specific specific and applicable to each and every one of you, this Christian faith is circular as well. Daily, you and I, we repent of our sins, we beat our chest and we confess our sins, and daily we are returned to the reality of our baptisms, the hope we have in Christ, the forgiveness of sins. You see, we must never forget that this Christian faith, it centers upon Jesus, and this Christian faith returns to Jesus, and this Christian faith rests upon Christ, Jesus. That is why Jesus calls us continually in the Gospels to abide, to to rest, to watch, to listen, to receive, to stay put, (laughs) to stay put, and to trust. But as you know, The problem that you and I have is that we're prone to wander. We certainly are. We are prone to wander. We're prone to leave the God that loves us. We're like sheep. Yeah, silly sheep who wander to other pastures. We are like coins that seem to just plunge deeply into cracks. We're like unruly children. Unruly children who rebel and go to the big city to have a party. We find a linear line and we search for that linear line. We jump on that line that points away from Jesus and then we get out of dodge, as they say. You see, our problem is not that our sinful, 
is, excuse me, our problem is, our problem is that our sinful nature loves to find lines that lead away from Jesus. To get us out of this pattern of circling back around to Christ. If we can find a line, the old Adam rejoices and wants to get out of Dodge. And to make things worse, our old Adam is quite tricky. Our sinful nature is quite, quite, quite tricky. We're often deceived into getting on that line and thinking that Jesus is behind us as a coach, you know, go on, go on, cheering us on from behind us, encouraging us upward and onward to great and wonderful, prestigious, great spiritual things. But when in reality, it is the devil cheering us on as we leave Jesus behind in the dust. Dear friends, this Christian faith is not you and me following some line to get some carrot on the end of the stick. We're not on a journey to get a treasure at the end of the rainbow. The problem is not that we have not arrived at the end of the line. The problem is that we can so easily believe that God wants us on some sort of line when in reality, the calling is for us to simply stay put, to return to Jesus and his gifts every single week, every single day, every single moment. Hear this loud and clear. You do not live apart from Christ. That is not how things work. You do not live independently from his gifts. Just as you need air to breathe, just as you need water to live, and that you need food for your energy, you must always return to Jesus for forgiveness, life, and salvation. This Christian life is circular because we are always returning to the fountainhead of grace and truth. And get this, we do not just return one time at the beginning or perhaps one time at the end, but we return constantly, continually. And so it is all about returning to Christ just like that healed leprous Samaritan. But how do we, how do we return? How do we return? Well, we return just like that healed Samaritan leper. We return with reverence, with our face in the dirt, not only thanking God, but also crying out for more mercy. God knows how much we need. We return to Jesus like little children to receive our full royal inheritance. Not as a strong and invincible adult, but as a begging son or daughter. Yes, a begging son or daughter. Perhaps it'd be, it'd be like a child going to grandpa and grandma's, knocking on that door and saying, I need the cookie and I need it now, and coming back every day and multiple times, hand out, give me the cookie, Grandpa and Grandma. And get this, the Lord God, he does not despise your returning. Perhaps that's the best gospel news we can hear. The Lord, he does not despise you returning him. It's like, oh my goodness, he's, oh, he's back again. No, it is not like that. You are not a nuisance to the Lord God. You're not a bother. He longs to hear you confess your sin. And he has joy in giving you forgiveness, life, and salvation. He desires to give himself to you and to bless you. Not just once. Not just at the beginning. And not at the end. But constantly. Baptized saints, this journey in the Christian faith is never to reach a prize at the end but to return to the prize that has already been given to you. You have Christ. You've been baptized. You have the word. You have the sacrament. It is for you. So return to the Lord and his house and return often. And may I suggest with a smile, with chins up, with joy, that our Lord God does not see us as a nuisance, but he longs to give us his good gifts. Gifts delivered to you as a sheer gift. In the name of Jesus.